Oh man, that is so hot. Hello? I really want a GT3 RS. Wait, are you trying to get me to do another Flywheel Films bumper? Look, that's not the point. Look man, I told you. You already have a GT3 RS at home. You're right. It's kind of a GT3 RS. But how can I make it more like a GT3 RS? All these cards need to be a GT3 RS are hood vents, fender vents, a spoiler, and the one thing that you have sitting in your shelf right now to install. So my friend Jackson, as many of you know as Colored and Light, has had his YouTube channel for a long time. He's done a lot of things to his Miata. I'm theorizing he got bored and needed something else to do. So he decided to rip the handle off his door and install something different, something more race car. A lot of race cars actually have poles instead of a handle because they are more lightweight. And race cars, the ethos is lighter is better. Take the Lotus approach. Simplify, add lightness. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Now I'm not really taking much weight away in the grand scheme of this car. There's, it's not really about weight. I just threw in a sub that was like, 30 pounds, so today I am installing these from Jackson's new company, Super Automotive Accessories. I am super stoked. These are pretty sweet, um, and I just think every time I get in a car that has a door pull like this, I'm just thrilled. Usually those are Porsches, which are a bit more racy and a bit more, <sighs> yeah, it's interesting how expensive they are, yet how this method of closing the door exists. It feels counterintuitive, but, I'm excited to throw this on my car, Ghosty. So let's pull it out of the garage, figure out how it's actually done. So why would you do this? Well, we already talked about the weight, but another perk is these beverage holders, which you have to appreciate because the Miata, the NC Miata has four cup holders, which, are, which is crazy. Um, but it is a little hard to actually grab your drink depending on what it is because of this handle that is literally just in the way. So removing this actually does free up the access, the ease of access to this beverage holder for both NC1 and the premium NC2 and NC3 cards. So basically what we have to do, as far as my understanding, is just remove or you know undo part of the door cards, remove this handle, and there's a plug that'll go down here and the strap will actually go in up here. Now I have the leather door card inserts because this is an, a special edition. Grand Touring with leather, I would also have these. Actually, this is fake leather, by the way. The only real leather is the seats. That would be fake before I removed it. And uh, this is fake, so don't, don't think you're, don't think you're too high and mighty. But uh, yeah, see how hard it would be to get this Red Bull without this handle? It's ridiculous. Now you probably don't wanna drink this. Um, so that's the method. I'm gonna do it on one door by myself and then show you how to do it on the other door. But everything is here included. The instructions are on the back. Excellent packaging, Jackson. Um, now he sent me these plus the leather pieces. Well, they're not leather, but they're, they're for the leather door card inserts. Um, he sent me them separately. You would get them all together. Hopefully when he sends you your package, he spells your name correctly. Jerk. So, looks absolutely fantastic. Now for a test close. Boom, it closes. Nice and easy. So, I'm pretty thrilled. That's how one side looks. That was just a quick, you know, time-lapse version. Um, I do have to run to an appointment, so I will do the other side and actually show you step-by-step -step how to do it with his instructions momentarily. So, now that I have done one side successfully, by the way, <laughs> It's a completely different day and week that I'm filming this part of the video. I had to fly to Germany really fast, but I'm back to, uh, and I'm freshly inspired by German door card pulls from the GT3. So now that I've done one side successfully, using it to close the door, which is easier to do when you're inside the car, I will now show you step-by-step step how to do this side. Just look how much cooler that side looks than this. 
And by the way, it'll be great to have access to this cup holder once again. So step one, remove this piece, which kind of pulls up and out. You'll probably need a trim removal tool and the door card itself. We'll get to that. So as I learned when I actually replaced the entire glass, this piece actually has a lot of clips behind it and those clips can break. In fact, I broke some already, which means <laughs> comes off a bit easier now. Win, win. Actually, it's kind of win, lose, isn't it? Anyways, uh, I don't actually need this anymore. So now there's a bolt or a screw on top, which is a Phillips, but I have a flathead that is just small enough to actually fit in it. Um, that comes out the top and then at the bottom there's also another screw which you have to access from behind the door card so um, to remove the door card itself there's a few phillips screws there's one in the cup holder here it might squeak because plastic and behind the actual door handle is this piece that also comes out, which I also sort of broke the first time I did it. So this door card has seen better days, but still works. For my own notes, the shiny bolt goes on the top, which actually we're discarding that because we're replacing it with the one Jackson provided with his kit. Um, you will want to remember the small bolt up here in the door card. The smaller Phillips bolt went up here. The bigger one was from the actual door cup holder and now the door card should be free to be removed which if i recall correctly there are some clips ha there we are so and the door card you know kind of slides off the top once you get the clips on the bottom out now jackson said door card removal door card removal required and that is something I definitely recommend and the easiest way to do it is also to get the uh, locking mechanisms the door lock door handle mechanisms out of the way and that gives you a bit better access to the back of the door card which I will droop on the ground to try to get access to the screw on the back side hopefully that gives you some clarification behind the connectors here there's a bolt or a screw at the bottom of where the door handle goes inside the door. That's what you have to get to, and that's why I have to take the door card off. Got it. So now this just slides out like that. And now these are the two pieces of the door handle successfully removed. Now it is safe to reinstall the door. Okay, all the snaps are back in place and you can now reinstall the screws. So at this point you are safe to reinstall the door card completely because the strap can be installed with the door card fully assembled. The door card assembly again is just required to get this piece out from the back. It's so annoying how they <laughs> designed that, but whatever, it's Mazda. Um, now is also a good time to kind of clean off the door area because what was previously kind of covered and dusty is now wide open. And now for the strap. By the way, Jackson has all these great instructions on the back. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. You can remove whatever he used to keep everything intact, which in my case was a zip tie. Now you just need the M6 bolt to thread into the hole. Now this M6 bolt is a bit bigger than the bolt that came out which is intentional. It's because that this will provide more grip than, uh, you know, it's like shoving into the bigger hole, screw it in with a four millimeter hex situation. And this does take some pressure. All right, there we go. So on both my door cards, I actually had to drill a tiny little bit. Um, I used a 
7 30 seconds bit to start the hole just so that the screw could thread in just a little bit the bolt um, but i didn't drill like all the way in keep in mind you are drilling into plastic you're threading into plastic and that can be um you don't want to like break anything so i just drilled a tiny little bit stepped up from 3 16 to 7 30 seconds on a drill bit just a little bit on the entrance just to get the bolt started and then i did the rest by hand gradually i'd probably recommend not drilling the four millimeter thing because again it's plastic you don't want to break it so i recommend doing it by hand until it's really nice and tight but not till you're like destroying the plastic but that feels great looks great gonna throw this back in here and boom by the way before you tighten it down fully you want to make sure the long part of the disc is facing up which i did kind of accidentally uh, i forgot to check that step but that is a step jackson wrote in his instructions um so fortunately i did it right and when you tighten it down you just want to make sure the strap is about 60 degrees basically following the line and the door card is what makes sense but sweet the strap perfectly matches the actual stitching now the last part of the instructions is taking the rubber grommet and using it to fill the hole now be a bit careful when you do this um, because if you drop it it will just go inside the door card but now you know how to open and remove the door card, so it's not the biggest deal, but just kind of fits snug in there, follows the line, even though it's an oval and this is a circle, it still kind of molds itself into place, which is pretty cool. And that's it, that's how it looks. Fantastic. And unlike the other side, let me actually sit inside the door and test it out. Switch to 0.5X, there we go, true POV style solid now i feel a bit more like a race car driver but yeah this uh strap color now there are a variety of colors you can order and both for the leather door card and non-leather door card which is actually not real leather so <laughs> but he did a pretty good job at matching the texture of the fake leather to the texture of this disc that covers the ugly little hole behind it so looks pretty good feels very solid and this Pacific color matches my special edition 2012 stitching just perfectly. So pretty big fan of that. I'm going to use that to close my door. And now I have easy access to the cup holder, which is fantastic. I love seeing my friends and others come up with ideas for products just like this one. And honestly, this platform has been out for 20 years, but there's still new things and ideas to uncover. I mean, just look at that. Even through the window, you can see how awesome it looks. So I'm sure Jackson did it selflessly, you know, just uh, trying to give a good product out there for other people. But in reality, he probably did it to give his car a few more cool points and to maybe get him into some of those Dallas Bavarian car meets. I don't know, I hear they're pretty hard to get into, but uh, either way, nice job, Jackson. So I like them clearly, but don't just take my word for it. I actually have a friend here from the motherland where the Porsche GT3 RS is from. Uh, let's get his actual opinion. Andres? This is the Wahnsinn. This is Wien and Porsche, also absolute top uh, Wahnsinn, yeah. Liebes. <laughs> yeah, what he said. So, hope you guys like these door poles and uh, link in the description below, of course. Definitely check out Super Auto Accessories and use code GHOSTY10 to receive 10% off your order and support a fellow car enthusiast and friend named Jackson, aka Code and Light. He's been making videos for so long. Um, I think it's just really awesome to support all of his time and effort. And I encourage you guys to support whoever you can that brings you content. Anyways, yes, thanks so much for watching another quick little mod on Ghosty Miata. The whole thing is coming together great. As you can tell, we have a complete dumping of snow lately. So I'm going to go film another video featuring some snow. Cheers. Cheers.